eight members, so we now are in public session. I would um, invite the public into the gal gallery and welcome today's meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. Advise uh, members that all mobile phones will be set to airplane mode or silent or indeed turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the Assembly's recordings. I have very sensitive microphones here, so the session is being recorded in video and audio and can be uh, accessed via online streaming either at the Assembly website or Democracy Live. Anyone in the public gallery is welcome to use mobile devices as long as they are in airplane mode all the, and all devices are muted. Uh, they can connect to the y Assembly Wi-Fi. Password details are available on gallery rules and is not permitted to take photographs or record any of the meeting. Uh, item 3, members, any apologies? Alicia. Apologies from Mr McHugh. Sir, just, I want to apologise for last week at class, but not the meeting. So apologies. Um, item 4, minutes of the meeting of the 29th of January, pages uh, 14 to 18. Refer members to the draft minutes sorry, of the meeting on the 29th of January at pages 15 to 18. Are members content with these draft minutes? With your permission, I'll sign them. Okay. Item uh, six members then is um, oh sorry, item five, matters rising. Uh, I have to advise members that the electronic tablets are to be issued from next week on. That's my understanding. Anyway, the court will advise us in due course. Is that the case? Yeah. Okay. Um, item 6 in the agenda is correspondence, pages 20 to 41. Uh, refer members to note the following correspondence that is emails from um, Edward Cook, dated the 15th, 16th, 22nd, January 2020, pages 21 to 35. Response from the economy clerk Peter Hall, dated 23rd of January 2020, page 36, and an email from Mr. Cook, dated 30th of January 2020, pages 37 to 38. <coughs> um, I advise members that Mr. Cook has made allegations that the University of Ulster failed to undertake Section 75 screening and provision of large amounts of PhD funding, and also prior to undertaking large-scale capital construction projects. Mr. Cook. Um, ascertains that this is uh, screening failure may have impacted on certain classes of people, including himself. He has written to a number of individuals and public bodies, but has not received a satisfactory reply. I advise members he's also written to the Committee for the Economy. A memo from the clerk to this committee, who has in turn referred to the correspondence to the PAC and Department of the Economy and the Northern Ireland Office. Lord Office. Uh, members, I am open to your views. Clark, do you wish to speak on the issue? Um. Just to say that, um, in line with PAC's protocol in dealing with whistleblowers, um, it may be appropriate to refer a complaint to the Northern Ireland Audit Office and request that the CNAG report back um, its findings in due course. Okay, members. Members content. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Okay. Could I ask the uh, clerk to maybe write to Mr Cook advising him if you're doing that, if you don't mind. Um, I also refer members then to correspondence at pages 39 to 41, an email from Mr Paul Sayers dated the 20th of January 2020, and advise members that Mr Sayers asked if the PAC are able to examine all the records regarding the provision of funds in the form of grants, loans, payments from the Ulster Land Fund the Reserve Fund and various direct and indirect government funding schemes to the National Trust Northern Ireland. Mr Sayers had previously written to the Northern Ireland Audit Office. Um, could I suggest that uh, the committee writes to the Northern Ireland Audit Office asking for clarification on these points and that Mr Sayers raises uh, the remit of the um, uh, Controller and Auditor General in respect of the Auditing Council of the National Trust. And the, if, and if so, that the NIAO holds the information Mr. Sayers is looking for. Members can Great. 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 Can I again ask the, the committee to write to Mr. Sayers advising of this action? Great. Okay. Thank you very much, members. Item 7, Treasury Officer of Accounts uh, Introductory Briefing, pages 42 to 275. 
refer members of the briefing papers from the TOA, pages 43 to 275. The briefing will set out the main principles dealing with the resource, resources used by public sector organisations in Northern Ireland. Papers include Managing Public Money, Northern Ireland, June 2008, pages 43 to 124. Regularity, Propriety and Value for Money, Treasury, Officer of Accounts, pages 125 to 180. Parliamentary scrutiny of public spending, December 2015, pages 181 to 248. Clearance and agreement of Northern Ireland Audit Office Value for Money reports, dated 14th of April 2015, pages 249 to 258. New protocols in relation to TFP uh, memorandum reply, packets MORS, and revised guidance in preparation for TFP memorandum reply, dated the 5th of March 2015, pages 259 to 271. And the public accountability process commencing it on NIO reports, PAC reports, and uh, matter under consideration by PAC dated 1st of September 2015 are pages 271 to 275. Okay. Uh, at this point, then, I would welcome Mr. Stuart Stevenson, Treasury Officer of the Accounts, and Ms. Julie Searle, Head of Public Audit and Accountability Branch, Department of Finance. And I would invite Stuart to give a brief presentation to the committee. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair. <coughs> Excuse me. Good afternoon, Chair, and thank you for your welcome. Okay. Um, very pleased to be here. My name is Stuart Stevenson. I'm currently the Treasury Officer of Accounts for Northern Ireland. I've been in the post for uh, two years. Um, I've been working in public spending directorate for six years, and I've been with the Department of Finance for uh, 18 years. So um, I've been in a, a range of roles, so um, plenty of experience, uh, hopefully, to draw on to, to, to help the committee. I'm joined today by my colleague, Julie Sewell, uh, who's the head of the Public Audit and Accountability Branch. And uh, Julie has a, a wealth of experience in public audit, and some of the previous members of the committee will recognise her from her previous work. Um, very pleased to be here today, and looking forward to having a constructive working relationship with the committee. Uh, if the chair is content, I would be keen to just outline the the overall role of the Department of Finance in terms of the use of public funds. Talk a little bit about the uh, role of the TOA and outline some of the, the key guidance documents that are relevant to the management of public funds and to the, the work of this committee. The, the, the role of DOF is essentially to ensure that departments use their powers only as intended and that expenditure is kept within agreed limits. Uh, we're the department responsible for setting the ground rules for the administration of public money and we're accountable to the Assembly for doing so. Uh, it is important to note, however, that the, the responsibility for heads of departments and for permanent secretaries, who we designate as accounting officers, to ensure that they control and account for their own department's business and the use of resources allocated to them. Julie and I work in uh, Public Spending Directorate, and our primary role is to advise ministers on the planning, management, control and accountability of Northern Ireland's public expenditure. PSD has three main aims uh, to ensure an appropriate share of public expenditure resources, to ensure that that public expenditure is allocated, managed and accounted for in line with the programme for government and the requirements of the Assembly, and to promote value for money on behalf of the Executive Committee and the taxpayer. As TOA, I head up Accountability and Financial Management Division, uh, one of three divisions within the Public Spending Directorate. Uh, the other two divisions are Central Expenditure Division, which is responsible for the, the planning, management and control of the, the Executive's public expenditure position, and they would lead on the Executive's budget process. And Supply Division, which is responsible for making recommendations on the optimum use of resources and for ensuring that that money is spent as intended. And it would be Supply Division who are ultimately responsible for providing departments with approval for any expenditure that's over the delegated limits, and for approving any spend which is considered to be novel, contentious, or repercussive. 
Uh, as TOA, I am head of AFMD and I'm currently responsible for Government Accounts Branch, which manages the, the daily drawdown of funds to departments from the Northern Ireland Consolidated Fund. Financial Reporting and Accountability Branch, which is responsible for issuing financial reporting guidance to the Northern Ireland public sector. And the Public Audit and Accountability Branch, which Julie heads up, uh, which is most closely linked to the, and related to the work of the Public Accounts Committee. Within Westminster, the TOA role goes back over a century uh, to 1872, and it was originally a role responsible for providing departments with advice on bookkeeping. Indeed, the provision of advice and guidance on financial governance, control matters, is still a core responsibility for the TOA post, and it's under the signature of the TOA that formal guidance from DOF is issued. That the guidance can cover a wide range of issues, um, from technical accounting guidance to governance related guidance on topics around delegations, risk management, role of audit committees, etc. <clears throat> I'm going to touch now a little bit on some of the, the, the key guidance. Um, managing public money in Northern Ireland is the, the key document which members will, will no, doubt, no doubt be familiar with. Uh, it's the cornerstone of our guidance for departments, for the executive agencies and the arm's length bodies. Um, it consists of seven key chapters, but it is supported by many more detailed annexes. Uh, it was first issued in 2008, replacing um, a document, Government, Accounts of Nor Government Accounting in Northern Ireland, or GANI, which you'll see the reference to maybe in some of the, the older reports. Uh, and GANI was a much more prescriptive and rules-based document, whereas managing public money is a more principles-based guidance document, um, and it applies to all central government public sector in Northern Ireland. Over the course of this mandate, we would hope to issue a refreshed version of managing public money. Um, and at the current time, we are operating with the 2008 version. <clears throat> Additional supplementary guidance to managing public money issues from DOF from time to time under the authority of DAO or FD letters. Um, those abbreviations would be dear accounting officer or finance director. Uh, an example of using a DAO is when we issued guidance there recently in uh, relation to good practice developing fraud proofing guidance. Um, DAOs ensure that the guidance is disseminated uh, to departments for wider circulation, to departmental staff, and to agencies and to ALBs. Uh, whether or not we use a DAO or an FD letter, uh, it's a judgment call. And the, the, the general rule of thumb would be that where the issue needs to be brought to the attention, to the head of a department or an agency or an ALB, we'll use the DAO. Uh, maybe whether it is a more, the, the, the subject matter is of more practical nature, maybe around accounts production then we would use more likely to use the, the FD letter. Two further pieces of guidance I'd just like to mention, um, and I understand you've been provided with the, the, the first key document, Regularity, Propriety and Value for Money. Um, this contains key principles around looking after public money and sets out good examples for accounting officers to consider. The, um, the, the terms regularity, propriety, and VFM are regularly mentioned in the context of DOF guidance and the work of this committee. Uh, and I, I suppose regularity is about focusing on the, the rules that are set. Propriety is, is a nudge towards acting within the spirit of the rules or the ethics around that. And VFM uh, encompasses economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. The other document I would specifically like to mention, and in particular interest for this committee, is the Parliamentary Scrutiny of Public Spending 2015. And this guide provides background information, guidance on the scrutiny of public spending by the CNAG and the uh, Public Audit Committee, sorry, Public Accounts Committee, covering areas such as the accountability cycle, the work of the Audit Office in producing value for money reports witnesses giving evidence to the PAC, and the process for responding to the committee and their recommendations. Uh, we feel the 2015 version is much closer to the processes and protocols that have evolved with previous Assembly PACs. Uh, however, some differences do remain, um, including some of the language used, and 
if the committee is content, uh, we would propose working together with the audit office and the PAC clerk to produce a tailored Northern Ireland specific version to work to. Um, so I will I'll leave that with the clerk for further consideration. Uh, in terms of the public audit process, we work closely with the CNAG and his team. Um, that is, of course, without impacting on the CNAG's independence and responsibility to the Assembly. And no doubt the CNAG has already discussed this and around the, the, the role and responsibilities of the Audit Office. But the purpose of our relationship is to assist in the smooth running of the public audit process, both for NIAO departments and also for this committee. Um, to support the public audit process, we would review and comment on draft audit office reports. We'll advise departments of upcoming hearings. We provide support to the, the witnesses ahead of their attendance and support the committee uh, in, in an advisory capacity at hearings. So I will be attending all evidence sessions to help the committee in any way I can. Uh, we, we then help departments in the formulation of MOR responses. We'll deal with any follow-up correspondence and we'll work with the NIAO and the PAC clerk uh, in doing so. I'd just like to highlight three specific pieces of guidance um, that I've issued previously by way of the AOs uh, in relation to the public audit process, and I understand these have been uh, shared with the committee. Uh, DAO 7 of 15. Uh, deals with the clearance and agreement of NIAO value for money reports. <clears throat> Back in 2014-15, uh, the Department of Finance worked with NIAO to draw up a more detailed procedures to ensure that the VFM reports, which are presented to this committee, are evidence-based and provided within an appropriate time frame. To improve and enhance the public audit process, the DAO was agreed between DOF and NIAO, seeking to ensure there was a proper clearance process in place, which seeks to avoid any disagreements on factual matters within reports before they come to the PAC for consideration. While many of the principles within this uh, piece of guidance remain sound, we have been engaging with NIAO, and we're about to uh, issue a new version of this. It's just been refreshed, really, to take account of the new broader range of reporting outputs from the Audit Office, and I'm sure Kieran has discussed some of those with you. Uh, we have also removed the, the somewhat prescriptive timetable for agreeing reports. Instead, we're placing more emphasis on early and ongoing engagement between NIAO uh, and departments, and in particular accounting officers, to ensure there are no surprises. And hopefully, we think this will contribute to a smoother process for agreeing reports in a timely manner. Um, we, we hope departments will seek to agree NIO reports and will work with them to do so, but there is ultimately the opportunity for the department concerned to state their position within a report if they are unable to agree with material views or conclusions, but we hope that is an extremely rare occurrence. DAO 5 of 15 covers the protocols in relation to the memorandum of reply. Um, and again, we've worked with your previous committees to produce guidance to improve the way in which we and departments respond to the committee's recommendations. We do this through the, the MOR, and we have agreed protocols for the handling of follow-up correspondence from the committee on MORs. Um, it's the executive's formal response to committee recommendations. They are laid in the name of the finance minister, and as TOA, I'm responsible for ensuring the recommendations are responded to clearly succinctly and as fully and positively as possible. Uh, these responses will be cleared by the relevant accounting officer, the departmental minister, and then by our own finance minister. <coughs> the AO 10 of 15 um, deals with commenting on NIAO reports, PAC reports, and matters under consideration by the Public Accounts Committee. So we've also provided guidance on dealing with the media um, on those reports and the matters under consideration by this committee. The general principle would be that no comment should be made or that comment is restricted until the audit and the assembly process is complete. The guidance, however, recognises that sometimes it is necessary to comment where 
headlines and criticism in the media are particularly unfair or unbalanced. Before I finish, Chair, I'd just like to take this opportunity to brief the committee um, on the process that we have implemented in recent years to ensure ongoing accountability um, around the public sector in the absence of the PAC process. Uh, November of 17, in his budget speech, in an effort to address the lack of public accountability, the Secretary of State at the time, James Brokenshire, stated he would be willing um, he would be writing to the CNAG for Northern Ireland, asking him to send a copy of all NIO audits and value for money reports, which would contain his view on any shortcomings, any recommendations for improvement. And he stated that he would be asking the NICS to make its responses to those reports available to him, and that copies be placed in the libraries of both houses to allow scrutiny by all interested parties and, and members and committees. Following on from this process for producing departmental responses to the reports, uh, recommendations were agreed by the NICS board, and we subsequently issued guidance on the process to be followed to assist departments and others in producing departmental responses to VFM report recommendations, presenting these to the NI Assembly and providing them to the Secretary of State for placing in both libraries. The guidance for preparing the responses contained the same broad principles as those for guidance on responding to PAC reports. Uh, the subsequent Secretary of State, Karen Bradley, uh, announced a further step in July of 18, um, whereby she undertook to also write to the main Northern Ireland political parties to highlight the publication of those reports and encourage them to engage with the findings. And she believed that was as robust a process as was possible at the time, ensuring that all political parties in Northern Ireland were appropriately cited on the findings of the CNIG. All reports published since November 17 have therefore had a departmental response published, which has been approved by the relevant departmental accounting officer, presented to the Assembly and sent to the Secretary of State through the DOF Permanent Secretary. Uh, to ensure full transparency, we have put all of these on the uh, DOF website, as we did with formal responses to PAC reports. I would highlight just the only exception to this would be the recent report on major capital projects, whereby work on preparing a departmental response has stopped as the Assembly has been re restored, and we are pleased to say that the normal public audit process uh, incorporating PAC through this committee can now apply. Chair, I hope that is helpful in terms of giving some background to the, the roles of the DOF and the, the TOA responsibilities. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Stevenson. Ms. Sue, is there anything you want to add to what Mr. Stevenson said? Um, no, no, that is fine. Stuart's covered everything sort of the, um, just okay, to, members, in terms of background. Uh, Mr. Dallas. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can't help noticing that the document I have in front of me, uh, Managing Public Money in Northern Ireland, is dated June 2008. Given that all political parties have now agreed to openness, transparency and accountability, uh, is there any need now for you to radically change how your department is run? Because you did say in your introduction that you are not responsible for individual department spending, and you will no one be aware that the Audit Office uh, published a report recently which shocked everybody in terms of the millions and millions of pounds of overspend, and certainly I want to take this opportunity to hear from you what contribution can be made to ensure that these type of situations do not develop in the future, <coughs> and maybe then we might have some money for health and education. <coughs> Stevens. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I suppose the, the comment I would make on that is that we we, we, we do constantly review our existing guidance, um, managing public money. As I, as I mentioned in my, my comments, we are we're keen to, to issue an updated, refreshed version. Um, we are also looking at accountability structures. We have had a, a major project in recent years, in particular, looking at relationships between departments and their arm's length bodies. And those projects um, 
are a, a great opportunity for us to, to kind of take stock of where weaknesses exist in relationships and where improvements can be made. Uh, so we, we do have a programme of refreshing our guidance. Um, and we, you know, the, the, the member is absolutely right to, to flag up shortcomings and difficulties and challenges that we face. Um, and certainly we as a department want to, to work in partnership with departments and improve performance. And certainly working closely in DOF uh, with the budget process and the, uh, the, the challenging public expenditure decisions that need to be taken. Uh, none of those issues are lost on us. And Chairperson, I, I'm very conscious there are eight other members here. And I just ask one final question. Uh, this goes, I'm sure Mr Sievers would agree, far beyond guidance, because guidance in the past failed. Surely there's a need to look seriously at legislation which reinforces a scrutiny and ensures that the scandals that happened in the past don't happen in the future. And do you, as Treasury Officer of Account, have any role in that? <clears throat> I think, um, in terms of legis the, the question on legislation, um, we would need to take advice on that. <clears throat> I, um, it's certainly something that we, we haven't considered in recent years for very obvious reasons. Um, but I think you're right. The, 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 the guidance that we exist, generally we find the, the, while the guidance needs refreshed and renewed um, occasionally, in, in general, when challenges and difficulties and shortcomings are exposed, it, it doesn't necessarily link to inadequate guidance. I um, certainly take on board those comments, Chair. Can you see it that, Chair Burst? Any other members? Mr. Beggs? Can you just follow up John's point of this being, the guidance being June 2008? Um, we've all been made aware of a number of issues of recent years where clearly the guidance has not been followed. Um, so, my question in, in terms of that, is there a need for significant retraining so that everyone is fully aware of good practice? And likewise, in terms of the deterrent side of it, has anyone ever been disciplined for not following the good practice? Yeah. I, um, I suppose the, the, the comments I would make uh, on that are that the I, I absolutely agree with the, uh, the comment around training uh, is a critical area. And we feel as well that simply by refreshing the guidance, that brings it back to the fore again. And, um, you, you talk about refreshing, but it says June 2008 on the document you've given us. Uh, absolutely. Um, we, we, we have done some work um, in 2015. Uh, for example, we had a substantial project uh, ready to go uh, in terms of replacing the uh, managing public money of 08. Um, we've recently, um, in response to some of the, the work of the audit office and some specific recommendations, calling for further updating. We're building on that work, um, and that project's underway at the moment. Um, and we have committed to, to issuing a new uh, updated version of managing public money. Uh, guidance is difficult. The, I think there are issues around capacity, which affects the timing of, of, of when we can get that guidance out. Uh, but certainly it is our intention to, to bring that out in the coming months. Yeah. Um, Mr. Stevenson, given that you're the Treasurer Officer of Accounts in Northern Ireland, two members have made reference to the, the guidance being dated 2008. I mean, in your experience, because you've been living this out daily since 2008, when there has been an administration here when we've had a Secretary of State, when we've had suspension, and now you're back with a, with a Northern Ireland Finance Minister. I mean, do you still have confidence that this document is robust enough in terms of the, the uh, job of work that you have to do uh, within government in Northern Ireland? Thank you, Chair. My assessment would be that the, the core principles on regularity, propriety, and value for money have stood the test of time. And, and will remain the core principles moving forward. 
the there are elements in the the, the 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 document, the guidance document, that do need refreshed. But I think, on balance, um, the, the 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 current arrangements are okay. But we should expedite to update those elements of the, the guidance. So what is um, what is the in terms of the word refresh used? What's the process that is followed for them to be refreshed? Yeah, certainly. The, um, we have a series of reviews uh, on the document. We'll look at um, similar guidance that has been um, produced in Westminster. We'll look at the changes that have been proposed there. Uh, we carry out an internal review within the Department of Finance, and my colleagues in PSD will conduct reviews. We will make suggested changes, um, produce a series of drafting questions. We then usually circulate around the departments for comments and also to draw on particular areas of expertise that exist in other departments. Um, we'll assess that feedback and, and make further edits and amends to the, the, the guidance. Um, and then we'll, we'll have a, a final check before, before issuing. So it's an iterative process. Okay. Um, okay. Do you have, and I'm not trying to put pressure on you, but do you have uh, an indicative timeline how you think this might be achieved? Um, yes, I. I think we've, you know, this time last year we had um, made a, a start on that initial review within DOF. Um, and with competing priorities, we, we had to stop that early on. So, um, uh, the comments I was making earlier on uh, in response to Mr. Beggs, I, you know, it is my experience is that it's difficult sometimes to be accurate with timelines around guidance. Um, we we operate in a demand-led environment, and sometimes the, some of this work is, is, is set to one side. Uh, but certainly, I would be hoping within the next few months that we would be in a position. That will depend a lot on the, the feedback from departments and from certain experts um, that we'll be consulting with. But, you know. Thank you very much, Mr. Milden. Thanks, Chair, and, and thanks for uh, the briefing uh, today. Um, I suppose on a similar vein, um, I just wanted to, to follow up on, on um, John's point, or Mr. Dalit, as we uh, refer to the, 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 the committee. Um, <laughs> 12 years, effectively, it's 2008, this uh, Managing Public Money uh, document. I appreciate that the principles uh, are the same, uh, albeit maybe not everyone follows those principles. In terms of issues that have arisen over this past uh, number of years, is there an element of where there are failings, does that then be reflected in this document? You know, so when you when you talk about refreshing uh, elements of it, you know, could you give me an example of where, since two thousand and eight, you know, w what elements would be refreshed? I appreciate you can't go into everything, but is, uh, if you could give me an you know, example of, you know, what would be refreshed within this document if it was to be renewed over yeah, the next yeah. couple of months? Um, I'll refer back to the example I, I touched on earlier. There, mm. we, the the work we've been doing. Um, to improve relationships between departments and arms length bodies. Um, it has drawn heavily on the, uh, the, the, the key document that's set up to, uh, to, to guide the, the principles for that relationship would be a financial memorandum. And the, um, the, the, the chapter in managing public money and working with others would be um, guidance in this area. And the actual template um, financial memorandum is, is a significant annex, which, which formed a large part of managing public money. So we've been doing a lot of work to um, improve relationships. Um, we've uh, set out a new template um, for partnership agreements for departments and arm's length bodies as they move forward. Mm. And uh, the, the, the new template um, certainly f we, we feel is about moving away from the kind of detailed man-to-man -man marking that may have existed previously to uh, a more strategic risk-based approach. And what we, what we want to see is um, better relationships focusing on the, the key areas and the key risks that are exposed uh, in the public sector, uh, rather than being hidden in maybe a more detailed approach. And certainly, 
I think, elements of recent um, public uh, audit and accountability issues are certainly reflected in the way we have drafted that, that, that document. So okay. we're certainly yes. trying to learn lessons and, yeah. and weaving in yeah. to the new guidance as we move and, forward. And would you look at other devolved administrations and how things possibly operate there as a way of influencing what we do here? Absolutely. And, and that, again, with that work, we, we've benchmarked, um, we looked at organisations in England, Scotland, Wales and in ROI. Uh, in particular, so it's been particularly helpful to to provoke ideas and and, and feed into the, the, the guidance that we've produced. So we've drawn heavily on that work. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, members. Um, Chair, I'm, I'm new to the committee, Chair, but I just I'm, I'm sorely tempted to ask. And I was trying to find my way. Um, I take it in terms of the, the legal statutes, because you, you mentioned there about legislation. There's no need to look at legislation. Is that correct? So it's a legal statute, the document itself, yeah? What legal status has it in the guidelines itself? Uh, managing public money? Yeah. Um, the, well, the scope of the document, would, would, uh, it applies to all the Northern Ireland departments, agencies and arms length bodies. It is a guidance document. Um, but within that, it would... Um, I need, to, I need to double check the, the legal references within well, it. I'm only asking if it's still up for it's, like, it's, it's come a test. The, the, the regularity, uh, by its very definition, is uh, um, advice to accounting officers and public officials to operate within the rules. Uh, no, that, and I okay. think the spirit of that includes uh, all the kind of general legislation that we would expect okay. public service and, to adhere to. And yeah, and I just want to go back. I want to follow on the point of best practice. Obviously, there's other best practice models out there. And you said you've looked across. I mean, you also mentioned experts and expertise. Have you? Have you exp yes, certainly. Oh, um, a bit on that, please. You know, there would be sections. For example, uh, I remember working on the review in 2015, and challenges with the section on state aid. Um, so we would uh, revert to the opinions and views and advice from uh, the EU division, and um, it was the old DETI, uh, Department for the Economy on their expertise around how to handle um, th those transactions that would potentially uh, attract state aid implications. So some of those kind of areas will refer to um, areas of expertise throughout the, the, the departments. Okay. Okay, members. Thanks, Chair. Mr. Stevenson, Ms. Sewell, thank you very much indeed for your time and for your presentation. We look forward to continuing uh, working relationship with you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, members, um, we're going to um, move into closed session. Programme signed.